Hi, I'm Tom Hoskins, editor of Mining Journal, and I'm here with Stephen Roman, who's the president and CEO of Global Atomic Corporation, which is developing the DASA uranium project in Niger. Uh, the company also generates cash flow from its joint venture with Befeza on a zinc concentrate facility in Turkey. Stephen, how are you doing? Tom, very well. Thank you. Nice to be here. Excellent. Good stuff. Well, let's uh, let's talk about DASA. Um, you recently finished a feasibility study there. Um, what did that throw up? Key differences between that and the PEA you 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 um you came you came out with a while back. Yes, uh, PEA we did in uh, May of 2020. It showed a project with a capex of uh, about 200 million. Uh, we use $35 a pound as our uh, our cost base, uh, our uranium price, I should say. And um, we did the feasibility study at the same price level, $35 a pound. And uh, remarkably, the numbers were fairly consistent. Uh, we had some uh, higher costs for uh, underground development, uh, some higher costs for logistics, uh, moving ocean freight, et cetera. But uh, remarkably, the numbers came out with still showing a very robust project at $35 a pound. And of course, uh, at the current price of uh, just over $40 a pound, uh, the project looks even better. So uh, it's, it's the largest, highest grade uranium deposit in Africa currently under development. I think it's the biggest and highest grade found in the last 50 years. And so, uh, you know, it's a real standout project and um, the feasibility showed that. And what about, what about timeline? Obviously there's a lot of interest in the sector right now with the price having, having risen, uh, uranium prices are up considerably since, since the summer. How long is it gonna take you to build the mine and how much is it gonna cost? So the cost is going to be just over 200 million in total, including a 10% contingency. Uh, that includes the, the plant processing plant as well as the mine. The mine is a ramp access underground uh, doing a thousand tons per day. So it's not a large uh, operation from the tonnage point of view. That's why the capital is quite low. Uh, so the mine will produce the thousand tons a day running uh, with the grade we have, we'll be producing between four and 5 million pounds a year of yellow cake. Uh, <clears throat> the plant uh, will cost about 150 million out of that 200 million. And uh, so what we're doing is we're actually uh, starting the site work in January to do the box cut. By April, we'll, we'll call her the portal and start going underground with our underground development. And uh, the idea was that in 2023, we would start constructing the plant so that by the end of 2024, we would uh, have yellow cake available. So we're telling utilities right now that January of 2025, uh, we'd be able to deliver a yellow cake. Okay, okay. Now, I just wanna move on to jurisdiction for a little bit. Some of our viewers, some of our viewers or, or listeners or readers um, may not be that familiar with, with Niger. Um, but maybe you can talk a little bit about challenges, like you know the, the, the risk of operating there. How have you found um, the interaction with the government and the per permitting process? So when I, when I founded this company in 2005, uh, I'd previously been with Denison Mines. My father started that company. And uh, I went to Niger because they were just opening up the country for new foreign investment. In 2007, we signed our permit agreements on six properties. Uh, 2010, we made the DASA discovery. We've actually got four deposits in the company. And <clears throat> once we discovered the DASA deposit, it was a game changer. So we focused most of our efforts there, but we've not had any issues with security uh, since 2005. And we've been in the field active since 2007. Uh, we're located right in the middle of the country in an area called the Timmer Soy Basin. Uh, and the uranium has been produced from there for the last 50 years with our two Orano mines as well as one Chinese mine. And uh, the area is very well protected by the government, by the military, um, because this is really the largest uh, cash flow generator for the country. So uh, they, they view uranium mining as a real key uh, business 
for the Republic of Niger. And so they, uh, they take it seriously. There's a French military base north of us. There's the largest US military base just south of us. And uh, the, the area is very well patrolled. I think recently there's been obviously a lot of issues in Mali and Burkina Faso as a part of uh, Al Qaeda and their group. Um, and of course, they've tried to push into the southern border regions of, of Niger, where you have that tri border area between Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. And uh, obviously, they, they're, they're small groups that make small raids, but we're a thousand miles away from that. Um, in an area that's quite inaccessible um, for uh, any kind of larger organization that may want to come and disturb operations. So with all the patrolling going on, uh, we feel very secure in the region. And uh, so we've not had any issues, Tom. Okay, well, that sounds, that's good to hear. Um, and so just moving on to the, the uranium story, which, you know, has been, has been hot. Um, of late, as as we've already mentioned, um, prices prices are up, um, but clearly there is still there's still quite a lot of confidence that they've got further to run. Um, you know, the, the, there's talk of the utilities coming back into the market to recontract. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What what are the utilities thinking at the moment? When are they when are they going to come back in? Do you think? Well, first of all, uh, let me say that I think we're entering in a completely new era for uranium and nuclear energy. I think everybody on the planet now realizes that to achieve net carbon zero by 2050, there's only one way to do it, and that's to ramp up nuclear power. It's very clean. It's very safe. New technology. Uh, you don't have issues like you had in the past. So... Um, that's really providing an impetus for uranium prices. Um, the fact that there's been very little investment in uranium for 10 years uh, since Fukushima, uh, there, there's a big shortage looming out there. The Chinese announced that they're gonna build 150 new reactors uh, over the next 15 years. They already have uh, quite a few under construction. But on top of the Chinese, many, many other countries now are adopting nuclear energy as a prime base load power uh, for their country. That's augmented with solar and wind, which is great, but uh, nuclear runs 24 seven for 50 years, 60 years. Um, so right now you've had a lot of smaller players uh, getting into the market, buying physical uranium. Of course, Sprott came in, uh, took out uh, the uh, Uranium Participation Corp that was run by Denison. And uh, that's really tightened up the market. The utilities haven't come into the market in any big way yet because uh, fuel buyers typically, they think, you know, maybe this is a bit of a promotion. The prices are going to back off a bit. But the way I see it with all of the new reactor builds, the, the uh, utilities really only have two to three years of inventory typically on board. And uh, for, for a company that's uh, spending uh, many, many dollars building a nuclear facility, you've got to have 10 or 15 years of, of supply available. You, you don't want your reactor to run out of fuel. So I would think in the new year, you're going to see more utilities entering the market. They are, they are now starting to issue RFPs for uranium supply. Um, so I think you're going to have, you know, even though it's backed off a little bit here in, in recent weeks, I think you're going to have another price resurgence in the new year. Okay, Stephen, well, that sounds like something to very much keep an eye on over the next next few months. But um, sadly, that's all we have time for today. But thank you very much indeed for joining us. My pleasure, Tom. Uh, glad to be here and uh, look forward to the next interview. Absolutely. Look forward to speaking again soon. But for now, that concludes this video from Mining Journal. Goodbye.